Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the probability and statistics. Today we will discuss about how you can find the joint PDF of the ordered statistics. The last lecture was on the ordered statistics which is available at my channel. But you can do the one correction is that uh, in the last lecture we have studied that the PDF of the kth order statistics is here. But there is slightly error is there so you can do the following correction. Instead of this you have to write this is a skip one term k is missing in the in this lecture so kindly correct this when you uh, watch this order statistics lecture at my youtube channel now what we can do in this lecture is we will see how you can compute the joint density functions between the minimum and maximum between these other two variables with between the n variables or between the any of these variables i and j so how you can do that we will see in this lecture so let's start with the first one is how you can find the jdf of the x1 that is the x one is called as the minimum of the xi's and xn is called as the maximum of this xi's. How you can find the joint density function? What is the definition of the uh, distribution function? All of you know that this is the for the one dimension and how you can find uh, write the CDF for the two dimension that is x is less than equal to x comma y is less than equal to y. But here we need the x1 and xn so that's the ordered pair we can write like here. Also, what is the meaning of that? If you have this element, so this is my uh, first element that is called as the x of 1, this is the second element, this is the third and then so on, this is the n element. So in between there is somewhere is x is there. So what is the meaning of this term is? This is here. This is less than equal to x. So what I can do is I can write this complete terms A. If I can subtract this element B, this is same as that of this. So this is way I can write here. You can see that how I that I can this is my x how I can write like this way that is a complete element that is from minus infinity to plus infinity and I can subtract all those elements which are greater than of the x are there now our target is to find these two values how you can find this value so since y is the minimum of there so whenever x these are greater than of the x so it may be that x lies here or it may be that x lies here so there are the two cases either x is greater than or equal to y or less than what will happen if x is greater than or equal to y so since y is the largest element and here is the first element so if x is greater than or equal to y means x lies somewhere here so but there is no ordered pair are there what is the meaning of that this value is nothing but my zero because there is no element or there is no probability which are lies outside that so if it is zero then what will happen this will zero so the cdf will be my here also what is that this is nothing but my cdf of the xn how you know that cdf of the xn is nothing but my if it is y then f of y of n this is we already discussed in our last class now how you can do like this way if x is less than equal to n then definitely this will not be the zero then how you can find that so i can find this expression in terms of here what is the meaning of that if x1 is greater than n xn is less than y so what is the meaning of that x1 is of here and then so on so since each of the xi's are my iid so i can write these terms as of here what is that i can write these terms of how you can write this term as x is less than of b is in terms of the cdf this is f of b minus f of a so i can write the same thing as of here so we can substitute this value here what is that this is nothing but my f of y raised to power n minus if i substitute here that is a required distribution function of the or called as the cdf of x1 xn once you know the cdf function how you can find the joint pdf all of you know that you can take the partial derivatives two times of this you can substitute this value here then now take the partial derivative with respect to y what is the partial derivative of this with respect to y n will be coming up so what is that if you take the partial derivative of this what will happen this is nothing but my here and of what is that this is the derivative of the cdf is nothing but the pdf and here now you can take the partial derivative with respect to s what will happen this part will be my zero if you take the partial derivative with respect to x and here what will happen is minus of n this is fy minus fx now n minus 1 is also come this is n minus 2 and what is the derivative of this is my f heck and so on so this minus minus plus and it can be written like here so this is the formula for this CDF joint of the x1 and xn. Same way uh, you can write the CDF for the any of the xi's and xj provided i is less than j means 
here is xi and here is xj how you can do that this is the same way you can write this way instead of the fy and fx we have to write in the similar manner you can drive this way now since it is a very difficult to remember this formula so we, what we can do is we can simplify it with the help of the beta function we all know that what is the beta function of the ml what is the beta function of the mn is this is nothing but gamma function of the n and here so i can write like this way so since it is a factorial so what is the gamma function of the m it is nothing but m minus 1 factorial if m is my integer now here this is the ordered pair so all the elements are integer so i can write this element as here now you can see this is i minus 1 this is i minus j minus 1 so if i divided this by j minus 1 and multiply j minus 1 it will be like here so i if i multiply this by j and divided by j also what is that this part is nothing but j factorial so how i can write that i can multiply this one, one as a j factorial one as here so what what will happen this is nothing but my beta of this now what will happen you can see this part is that nothing but ncr so this is the expression this is the for the cdf of the xi and xa so how you can remember this we will see a couple of the examples so if you consider i as a one j is n then it is nothing if you substitute here it will be my same expression for this why because it will be zero that's a one it will be my nothing is there so this is again my here and it will be my one is there now uh, if you this is uh, between the two variables so if you take as a three variable what will happen it will come as n minus two here now it will be n minus three it will be fx fy and fz here similarly if you take as a n number of times so it will be n minus three n minus four until n minus n n minus n will be zero this part will be my n factorial so i can write like here now we can explain this with the help of the four or five examples so look at that uh, how you can find the joint density function between the two variables x3 and x look at that these are not asking about x1 xn what is the n in this case is 4 it is given to you here so this is the rule of the x xi and xj but i will tell you the two different methods how you can compute the joint density function so the first method is firstly we will compute the cdf of this pdf how you can do that that's very simple we will do the first method is we can compute the JDF of all this and then we can find the marginal P. Otherwise, we can use this concept directly by using the formula which we discussed. So let's discuss by one by one. So what is the joint density function of all these variables? That is x1, x, that is the n factorial here. What is the n is my four variables? So it's my four. What is the PDF of the x i? So this is my 2x1 and so on. You can write here. So what is that? 24. This is nothing but 16, x1, x2, x3 and x4 are my here, provided this is my ordered pair. Once you will get the joint density function, uh, so as we all know that if you have the JDF of this form f of x, y, how you can find the value of the fx? That is by the marginal of here, collection of all those y. Same thing for here. Now we want to find the x3 and x4 out of this what you can do you can in double integrate with respect to the x1 and x2 that is the marginal so how you can find this one is double integration with respect to the x1 and x2 are here so what is the value of this we already compute here now we can substitute the value here since we integrate with respect to the x1 and x2 so x3 and x3 are constant how you can integrate this with respect to the x1 is this is x square by 2 and the limit is from 0 to x2 so what will happen this is x2 cube divided by 2 are there now again you can integrate this with respect to x2 you will get here so you can see this will be cancelled out it will be 48 x35 and so on is the required answer of this problem this is the first method you can do also the by the same uh, uh, second method is by using this formula what you can do is you want to be find x3 and x4 so i is my 3 j is my 4 make sure that i must be less than of the j so i is my 3 j is my so you can substitute here n is my 4 j is my 4 j is 4 beta function of the i j minus i what is the j minus i is 1 you can substitute the value here as of this this is the pdf so what is the pdf is 2x3 
this is the PDF is a 2x4 this is the CDF we already computed the CDF as of the xk so if it is a y y is nothing but my x y3 or x4 you can write here as x4 also you can substitute this value what is the beta of 3 4 is you can use this formula what is the gamma function of 3 is nothing but my 2 factorial so this part will be my 2 factorial 1 is 0 and so on so what is that this is 3 2 and if you solve them you will get the same answer of this look at the another example so again you have to find the joint density function between the maximum that is a x15 because it has a 15 minimum is x1 again we will firstly write this since it's a uniform distribution we can find the pdf and the cdf as here all of you know that the cdf of the exponential uh, of the uniform distribution is here a is my 0 b is my 1 so it can be here now again we will discuss the two method our aim is here but remember that if you find the joint density function as of this that is a 15 factorial f of x1 f of x2 and up to the f of x15 so x15 is 1 so it will be my nothing but here f of x1 and so on between here but how you can integrate this since we need only the x1 and x5 15 so we have to integrate this with respect to x2 x3 up to the x14 that's a very lengthy procedure so in order to avoid this 13 times integration this is how many times 13 times integration what we can do is we can use this formula how you can use we can use this x1 and x n are this formula here n is my 15 what is the f y is we can substitute from here we will get this result that is a 15 this is a 14 what is the f y is nothing but my y fx fx is my 1 you can write here as a 1 and 1 is there now once you will solve them what will happen is sorry this will be my f of x is nothing but my 1 so this will be my 1 so what is the calculation is there let's say 15 into 14 is my here so this will not be there so that is for here now what is the second way is you can use this rule you can substitute the values now in order to find x1 and x15 what we can do is we will find x i is 1 this we can substitute this value here f of x is my 1 so it is again as a 1 it is as a 1 so if you substitute this value here we will get this one so what is the beta function of the 1 14 we can write here this is 1 by using this what is the gamma function of the 14 is nothing but 13 factorial gamma function of 15 is 14 factorial we can substitute this value here we will get the same answer as that of the previous one look at the another one is if x i's again are the uniform distribution and they are the iid you have to find the pdf of the jth order statistics so look at that in this case they are not asking about the joint density function between the two variables so again it's a uniform distribution function so we have to find the pdf and the cdf always then our target is to find the pdf of the jth of one order so i can write this formula that i have mentioned in the correction so what is that what is that i want to be the jth so i can take k as a j so i can substitute k as a j here so what is that this is the n factorial ncj this is the ncj this is my j f of x is nothing but my x you can see that so x raised to power j minus 1 this is 1 minus x pdf is my 1 so if you can cancel out what will happen this is nothing but here what is that this is so i can x this again complex i can write this in terms of the beta function of here i can write this as a gamma function of this this of this what is that this is nothing but my beta function of the m beta function of the n is there you can see that so i can write like here so do you remember that what is that this is nothing but my beta distribution beta distribution of here so what is the meaning of that if x size follows the uniform distribution then x j will follows my beta distribution now the another question is we have to find the mean and the variance we all know that if x follows the beta distribution mean will be here variance is this so I can substitute the value m is my j m plus n that is the sum of this it will be nothing but my n plus 1 similarly for here this is the mn so this is my m and this is for my n you can substitute this value you will get the required results similarly you can do it uh, this one if x i are follows the iid these are the iid then you have to find the x1 
what you can do is you can do the same way as that of the previous one instead of the k as a j i can take k as a 1 and you can do it let me know what is the answer of these two question marks in the comment box till then you can simply find another videos related to the order statistics of the mla estimate in our next class you can simply follow this lecture for the various videos best of luck students happy learning